Hey guys, it's Drew Brasher with DBB Audio. I am here today with another effects tutorial for you guys, but today we are gonna be talking about my favorite compressor and effect that's built into this board. It's called the Leisure Compressor. Now that's an emulation of the LA-2A compressor, which is arguably the most popular effect and hardware compressor ever. Next to the 1176, the LA-2A is perfect for vocals and also bass guitar. So let's go ahead and dive in and check this thing out. We're gonna first hit the effects button. We're gonna insert this on effects rack five. So we're gonna rotate this until we get to five. And then we're going to rotate this knob until we find the leisure compressor, which is right there. So we have two different versions. We have the dual and then we also have the stereo. So today we're gonna be inserting the dual. And so once we are there, we wanna go ahead and press set. So that go ahead and sets that. And then I'm gonna insert this on, on uh, channel one and channel three. So we're gonna use this knob, put it on channel one and channel three, and then let's make sure to insert that. So now that we have this inserted, let's go ahead and actually check out the effect. So uh, here's our control service. So we have two layers. We have a one and a two, and we can use our layer button to go between the two. Layer one is gonna be controlling uh, channel A, and layer two is gonna be controlling channel B. So our first button that we have here is our active button. This is our um, active or turning off the effect. We can bypass it by using this. Uh, our gain knob is here, and we also have another gain knob over on the far right. I'll explain those in a second. Uh, lastly, we have our peak reduction, um, and then a compressor limiter button. Now let's go ahead and talk about our gain knobs. We have a gain knob here and a gain knob here. Now both of these can be used independently of each other um, and they can be additive or subtractive to each other. With that being said, I consider the left gain being the main gain of the effect and the gain on the far right being an additional gain that you can use selectively if you'd like. Now, the gain is actually post-compression. So um, if you turn up or down the gain, that has nothing to do with the actual compression portion of the compressor. So if you turn this up, it's not going to raise the level before the threshold and before the compressor. Um, and so when we're talking about this gain knob first, uh, we notice that it says 40. Now 40 does not equal decibels. Um, consider this to be a control number. So we can actually have zero all the way up to 100. And zero, if we put it at zero, this will not pass any audio through it. And if we turn this up to 100, it actually has positive 28 decibels of gain. So that's a lot of gain that you can apply with this. However, with the compressor, you can compress about 24 to 25 decibels. So it's good that we have the ability of bringing up that gain so much. Now, um, I have a graph on my blog post, dbbaudio.com, that actually shows the control number versus the actual gain or reduction that's being applied. So make sure you go check that out and I'll make sure to put a link at the end of the video for you. Now, the gain over here, we have the ability of going negative 18 all the way up to positive six. Um, so the only difference between these two is that this has a larger range and this is actually in decibels. So you can use either one, um, it doesn't matter, it's up to you. Normally I have this set at zero and gain at 40 is going to be uh, unity gain so that there's no uh, gain or reduction applied to your channel. So let's go ahead and move over to peak reduction. So peak reduction is going to be the setting for the threshold of this effect. So if we turn this to the left, it's in essence bringing the threshold up which is reducing the amount of compression that's taking place. If we move this to the right, it's going to bring the threshold down, which is going to make more compression on your channel. When we have the set about 36, it's going to be unity gain, which is about negative 18 dB FS, which is dB full scale, which is this meter here. Um, also on my blog, I have the threshold readings with the control number here. Um, so make sure you check that out so you can see where this threshold is set here with this control number. The last thing that we need to talk about is the compressor and limiter. Um, in the original manual, the compression ratio was three to one on the compressor and the limiter is infinity to one. Now that was on the original LA-2A. Now the, uh, the LA-2A used a T4 photo cell which was frequency dependent and program dependent for 
the actual compression that was being applied. So those numbers on the ratio have to be taken very lightly because they're not an absolute number. So there is a difference between compression and limiting. Uh, I've noticed that limiting will give you about two uh, to three decibels more compression than the compressor will, and there is an audible difference between the two. The basic settings that Behringer brings up default is here. So we have a gain set of 40 um, usually and a peak at 48 and the gain over here at positive one. So when I am using this effect originally, I usually take my gain right here down to one uh, and take my peak limiting down to 36 and my gain over here is set to 40. I make sure it's active. So I do that on both channels and then now this effect is in essence at unity gain. So so it's not applying any gain and the compression is just going to be at the point where we're at a full scale signal on our board at negative 15 to negative 18. So we're going to go ahead and use this compressor today to get those vocals sounding a lot more even together, um, which we'll notice that we'll need to bring up the gain on the female quite a bit. So let's go ahead and do that. Mercy. So we're gonna start out with the male vocal. And the first thing that I really wanna do is get the peak um, down to the point where I'm going to be getting some compression. Now the nice thing about this compressor is you can really compress a channel a lot without it sounding terrible, which is awesome. The other thing that I love about this compressor is it's really one knob and then making the gain up with the makeup gain. So it's really easy to use. So that's a pretty good amount of compression, about seven decibels. Now this VU meter is accurate with the amount of compression that's being applied. So um, when we see a number here, we can relate it to the gain on this side or this side. So now that we have that set, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up. So the input and the output, if I activate this or deactivate this, is pretty similar. So we're not gaining a lot of volume by putting it through the compressor, but the actual signal of the singer is going to be improving. So let's go ahead and go over to the female. Let mercy you triumphed over death and you so you can see that I really have to bring that threshold down to the point where it starts compressing her vocal, which you can't even hear in the mix yet. So let's go ahead and bring this gain up a lot. Whoa, there we go. Alright, so let's go ahead and deactivate the effect and bring it back in. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and listen to it on this pass. Jesus, you will want me. You've broken every chain with love and mercy. You triumphed over death and you are worthy of glory and praise. And then on this pass, I'm going to deactivate the effect. Jesus, you will want me. Her vocal has dropped completely out. So thank you so much for watching this video today on the Leisure Compressor. It is a very awesome effect that I love to use on any of my vocals. Um, I pretty much always insert this when I have a vocalist uh, that needs a little bit of compression on their microphone. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to post below. Um, also, make sure you check out the blog posts that I have on this to check out those graphs and charts that I made um, showing you where the threshold is and where the gain is for those control numbers. And lastly, make sure you subscribe to my channel because that way you will be up to date on the most recent videos that I'm releasing from the Behringer X32 series. Thank you so much.